Hello everybody and welcome back for another local history story. And we've got another uh, historical legend type story for you today. This is one connected with the Kinloch family of Strathmore. And uh, this is a family which has a long history in the Dundee and Angus area. And uh, they include people like George Kinloch, who became known as the Radical Laird. And he became Dundee's first MP in the 1830s. And there's plenty of stories about him which we might hear one week in the future. Uh, but this is about one of his ancestors. And this is said to be the man who first gave his name to that uh, Kinloch estate in Strathmore. This was a man named Dr. David Kinloch. So he was born in 1559 and in his youth he trained in medicine uh, throughout the European continent. And he returned to Scotland and set up a physician's practice in Dundee. And his reputation as a doctor was very, very good indeed. His reputation was so good that King James VI of Scotland sent for him to become his own personal court doctor. But Kinloch's skills were not just limited to medicine either. He had learned several languages while he was training in Europe. And he was also well renowned as a poet who wrote in the Latin language. And King James came to trust Kinloch so much that he began to see him as a political advisor and a confidant as well. And sometimes King James would even send Kinloch to Europe on diplomatic business. Now, this was quite a dangerous line of work to be in. And it didn't always work out the best for Kinloch. Particularly at one time when King James sent him to Spain on diplomatic business. But he became suspected of being a religious heretic and he was thrown in jail. And these were the days of the Spanish Inquisition. So Kinloch feared for his freedom and for his life. And while he was in jail, Kinloch took to eavesdropping on the jailers to get as much information about the outside world as he could. This was his only human contact. But luckily for Kinloch, he did have an animal companion as well. Because there was a beautiful black cat who used to prowl around the walls of the prison and sneak between the bars where she was sure to get lots of attention from the lonely prisoners. Now, one day, Kinloch heard from the jailer's gossip that the Grand Inquisitor had fallen ill, and all the doctors that they could find throughout the country were at a loss for how to cure him. And Kinloch saw his chance to get out of the situation. So he shouted out from his cell in Spanish, I'm the King of Scotland's best doctor. I'm sure if you let me see him, I'll figure it out. But the jailers just laughed. Oh, you're a doctor, are you? That's a new one. So Kinloch thought that his reputation was good enough, that if he could only get word to the right people, they would recognise his name and they would ask him to come out and treat the Inquisitor. But how was he going to do that when the jailers wouldn't believe a word he said? Well, as Kinloch sat there, the cat came in and he stroked the cat as he thought of a way to get the word out. And as he sat stroking the cat, he realised how smooth and shiny her fur was. This was a well-fed, well-groomed cat. This wasn't just any old street moggy. This looked like the pet of a wealthy family and possibly a very important family. 
So Kinloch reached about in his pockets and he found the little physician's reference book that he always carried with him. And he tore a page out of the back and scribbled a message on it. And he tied the message around the cat's tail with a strip of cloth that he tore from his shirt. And as he, as he watched the cat leap through the bars and away into the city, he prayed that his message would find the right audience. Now, the, ne the next morning, the doors of his cell were thrown open, and behind the jailer stood a man wearing the robes of the Inquisitors. And Kinloch thought that this was either good news or very, very bad news. Are you the doctor? said the man. Yes, that's me. Well, follow me and we'll see if you're as good as they say you are. So Kinloch was led through the city and into the house of the Grand Inquisitor and up into his bedchamber where the most feared man in Spain lay looking very close to death. But Kinloch examined him and he thought he saw what his illness might be and he sent one of the servants out to gather up the herbs that he needed and he made up a potion for the Inquisitor to drink. And as he sat by the man's bedside, Kinloch couldn't get rid of the thought that if this did not work, it was probably the end for him. But within an hour, the Inquisitor was starting to stir and the colour was coming back to his face. And within two hours, he was up on his feet and looked well on the road to recovery. So the Inquisitor thanked Kinloch and sent him away with an escort to the harbour. And he got a full pardon and he got a passage on the first boat going back to Scotland where he returned to his home in Angus and continued to practice medicine in Dundee until his death in 1617. And Kinloch was buried in the family plot in the Howth graveyard in Dundee. And when the Howth is open, you can still go in and see his grave there. And although the inscriptions are by now looking faded after centuries of Dundee weather, there was a verse in Latin on the side of the tomb, which roughly translated reads, Gallant Kinloch, his famous ancient race, erected by this appears upon this place. This honour great indeed, his art and skill, and famous name both sides of the pole do fill. So that is the story of David Kinloch and his escape from Spain. And we'll see you next week for another story.